Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to talk about some of the new features which are in CS4. Um, and this one in particular is going to talk about um, the vibrancy adjustment um, that we can do. Now, what I've got here is a picture I took when I was in Egypt on the very first day when I was still bleary eyed. And I just couldn't get over how bright the colours were and how um, clear the water was, even though it was the Nile. Um, it looked absolutely beautiful. So I just got my point and shoot camera. And, and took a photograph of it and it's done a very good job of taking the image however the water was much bluer and the colors were standing out much much brighter so what we can do is we can look at using um, some of the adjustment options um, that are available in Photoshop and in particular we're going to talk about the vibrance now the adjustment is over on the right hand side of your screen if you haven't got it you can go to the Windows menu and you should be able to select adjustments if I click on that now it will it'll get rid I want to keep it so I'm not going to do anything there but with the adjustments panel open there's several different options we can do we'll, we'll have a play around with some of them um, now let's talk about how you used to do it versus how you now do it um, in the old days you would use this color curves um, command so if I just click on that what it does is it brings up this um, sort of color option here and what you would then do is by changing this graph by dragging with the mouse you can then adjust the image in all sorts of freaky and wonderful ways to the negative to the positive of the color and overexpose it underexpose it etc etc um, what you do have is you have some presets so if I wanted to make the image darker what it does is just put a slight bow in the line going further down if I wanted to make it lighter it does the opposite so really the, the presets aren't exactly magical but you, you can use them as a starting point and then adjust them later. However, this is an absolute pig if you wanted to get the colours absolutely spot on right. What you'd end up doing is you would have to do lots of options like this, dragging it and adjusting it just to get the colours in the, in the right format. Now, I've made a complete mess of this and I don't intend to use the um, colour curves option. But it was important just to illustrate and explain this is how you used to do it. I'm going to delete this adjustment completely and just say yes I don't want it at all so there we are we're back to our main image again now what I'm going to do instead is use the vibrance option which does the adjustment to the color curve in a much much simplistic way so clicking on that brings up these options at the top and all we have is two options vibrance and saturation so let's just explain saturation that's the easiest one of the lot saturation is how much color does it bleed into the image so the more I push it over the more color comes through so as you can see now that the, the the river is starting to become a bit brighter in color whereas if I knock the saturation down to zero or sorry minus 100 you just get a monochromatic monochromatic image so it's just black and white so I'm just gonna put that back on to zero again or in fact just click on the reset option here now watch what happens when I increase increase the vibrance though the vibrance just then picks up all the highlights in the upper midtones and just extends extenuates them, gives them a little tickle I would say and as a result it really starts bringing out the colors more. Now let me just turn off, hide the vibrance layer that it's created because it's, it's been put in as a layer so it's not affected your base document and can you see how the colors are much more richer um, it's not as pale. When I first looked at this I thought the picture looked fantastic but when you put the vibrance on it really makes things come alive hence the vibrance term. And what I'm probably going to do is I'm just going to increase the saturation a little bit as well so it really really does stand out and look at the difference that makes and all I'm doing is just dragging two sliders whereas in the past you would have to use the color correction um, tool and oh boy you'd win there forever so I'm going to just reset this and just talk about briefly what's going on behind the scenes now you can do this as well what you would have as well is the histogram icon or go to windows and histogram Either way will get us there. Now, when you come into here on the channels, you'll have all sorts of different options. So colors shows you the peaks and troughs starting on the left hand side, which would be darkness 
all the way through to brightness of those colors. So if I wanted to just look at the reds in the image, that's what's going on. If I want to look at the blues, which is obviously going to be um, the um, the river, I was going to say sea then, but it's the river, and the luminosity, the, the brightness, the things that um, overall make everything much lighter. And what I do is I sort of stick on the consolidator view, which is RGB. So you can see there's a lot of um, dark to middle colors and not much in regards light. Now what will happen is, I'm just going to click on this refresh button here which will give us the proper image. As soon as you start making any um, alterations this will give you sort of an, an, an example sort of preview of what the histogram is going to look like. You'll need to click on the refresh button to see what it really looks like. So it's, it's sort of guessing as it goes. So watch what happens if I ramp vibrance all the way up to the top. And you see what it's done, and that's why I say it gives it a little tickle. I'm just going to refresh that. And what you can see is, although it's still smooth here because there's not been changes, but look at all the little jagged lines here. That If you open up a histogram in any image you pull off the web, if you see any spikes, it is clearly indicating that the image has been fiddled with before um, you opened it. So if anyone says, oh yeah, this came straight from my camera, if you go and look at the histogram, if you see anything like these, these little spikes, that uh, generally means there has been some foul play involved before you receive the image. Um, but in this this case, using Vibrance obviously has to give those colours a little bit of a tickle to, to really make them stand out. So as a result, if I just move that back down to, say, here, and just click on Refresh, as you can see, it's a lot more uniform, but the spikes are still there, but nowhere near as bad. Now, what I tend to do is that I am red-green colourblind and I rely on the histogram quite a bit. Um, I mainly deal with um, image manipulation which is which is okay whether you're colorblind or not however when you start wanting to give colors a little tickle as I like to call it then I have a bit of a problem so what I tend to do is I use the histogram as a sort of like mathematical approach to changing the colors I sometimes get it completely wrong and I no doubt on some of these videos I'll show you that it'll go completely wrong but with a proper trained eye you'll be able to um, avoid the mistakes that I make um, but using the histogram is very very important to me because I can then see what's happening to the um, image as I go so I'm going to increase the saturation and what that will do is I'll just refresh again now is it will start making the image stretch slightly because it's now sort of blending those colors um, in between so as the end result I can make the image look a lot lot brighter than it was before but still stay within the parameters of um, what the histogram is um, allowing me to do so with that I'm just gonna collapse that again and that's what I would consider as a finished article very very garish very bright um, but if I turn it off that's what I started with and initially I look at that and that looks like a very nice picture but as soon as you turn that on look at the vibrance look at how much more exciting that image is so I encourage you to play around with this um, and really that sort of covers the vibrance option in the adjustments panel one final thing just to discuss is that if you had multiple layers on here and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pause the video and put another picture on just to show you and illustrate this okay so what I'm going to do is put um, an image which is completely not right for this I'm just going to paste that in um, and it, there. Right, now, um, I don't care about it clashing over the boat, that's not the purpose of this. It's all about the vibrance layer. So what I'm going to do is just collapse the um, attachments by clicking into the grey area here. Double click will just collapse it. Um, what's happened is the vibrance will sit on top of both layers. Now, what I want to do is I just want to move the vibrance down in between the layers. And what you should notice, it's very subtle, but what you should notice is that the vibrance is no longer affecting layer one. If I drag it back up, you can see it's affecting it. So it's in priority order. But what if I just wanted to apply vibrance to this blob of a square but not affect the base image behind. Well this is something that um, you can use all over the place and it's using the alt key. What you've got to do is you've got to be careful where you do this. Go in between the two areas so in between vibrance and layer and just hold down alt. Now what you should get is this sort of double circle approach and just click once. No dragging just click and what it will do is it associates the vibrance just purely with that layer. 
and you'll notice that the layer now has become underlined indicating that there's something to go with it so um, what you've done then is you've said the vibrance only affects that one part so let me just alt and click again to turn it off and watch what happens to the background image special attention to the um, the Nile itself so if I click again you'll see that look at the vibrance is back again and if I click again all it does is it applies the vibrance to that layer so using the alt key when you start playing around with adjustments is very important because you can then say this um, adjustment attribute affects this layer only. So with that, that should give you quite a bit of control over applying vibrancies over multiple images. So thanks for watching this video and I hope to see you again.